Hello, and thanks for watching another episode on the uh, mill here. It's going to be part two, trying to get everything mounted up into the control box and uh, probably get a lot of the, the stuff wired up in here. So I've got this all taken apart because I need to add a second switch here for the emergency stop button that goes to the control board so that when you hit the emergency stop button here, it lets the computer know that that's been hit and stops everything else from going on. But we've got the two first motors started here. And uh, now it's about time to get over to the control board. So I've kind of figured out the basic layout of where I'm gonna put the motor drivers and the power supplies. Um, they're just loosely in here right now. And it's about time to just mark everything out and start drilling and tapping into this aluminum plate underneath and screw everything in place and then get to wiring. So I'm gonna get you mounted up for that and get started. All right, so I've gone ahead and taken the power supplies out and I've just put some of this 35 millimeter railing in here to space out the, uh, just give me consistent spacing. That way the heat sinks aren't right on top of the next one, the fan can still blow them. The lid, when it comes down, it's also gonna have a fan blowing air right on top of these so I can keep the spacing a little bit closer together. But now that I've got them all lined up where I want them, I'm just gonna mark where the bolts are gonna go. All right, so I've got some marks there. And I can go ahead and drill those out. All right, so I've got my blue dots here. And I need holes that are drilled and tapped at each one. So I'm just gonna make a little punch where my dots are. Might need a better hammer. All right, and then I've got this drill set here. It's actually a drill tap. Let's see if it'll focus in on that in this light. So it drills the hole and taps it, puts the threads in there all in one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pre-drill these. Get my little pivot. Just gonna pull it off the table a little bit. Yeah, that was a 832 tap. So I'm just gonna clean up the holes real quick. All right, let's see how they fit. I guess I should probably do something more like that. So, screws hang out a little bit, but there's plenty of room in the box. And with that, at least the motor drivers are mounted, so time to do uh, something the same, but only different for the power supplies. Right, so I got everything cleared out here and managed to get another trip into the hardware store for a few things. So to start off, um, I already scribed a line kind of at the bottom of the power supply here. And um, when I had it in, in the box, just messing around with stuff um, to lay that out. And then I made myself kind of a little stencil um, to line up where the bolt holes go on the back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch those holes out real quick and hope that everything lines up and I can get the, the screws in there. Um, but first, let me just reorient here. Okay. 
Alright, so little jig guy kind of goes like that. And then lines up right there. And I tried to, nothing was cut with a shear here, so nothing's really true. Um, but if I line up, I tried to keep this edge as straight as possible. So if I line the back up and line it up with my, my scribe line that you probably can't see on the camera. So what really matters is this edge and then I'm flush up against it. Um, just that kind of help. So, I'm gonna hope that this works. And while I was at the hardware store, I got myself a little automatic punch. Hope you can see that. All right. So I, went, I picked up the screws that fit the power supply. Um, metric, I think it was four millimeter. 0.07 thread pitch. So they fit these uh, little threaded holes here. And I'm hoping that my little dimples line up with them. So let's see here. Now, I like using these little center drills. Um, Usually I'd use them in a lathe and they kind of self-center and give you a nice little center hole for whatever you're turning on. But they actually do a really nice job um, getting, you could use a little extra deburring, but it drills a nice hole. Um, Go ahead and flip it over to the back side. All right, let's see how I did. Not quite a big enough hole. I'm gonna cheat because I have it laying in here. Uh, I think this is my yeah 1032 drill tap, which I'm not really using. I don't know why it's the one sitting out, but the hole's a lot bigger than a four millimeter. And if somebody needs holes there that are drilled in tap 1032, there they go. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, holds up, not the straightest. I'm straighten it up, I think. Not a whole lot of wiggle room. make the holes a, a bit bigger and it wouldn't be a problem with the size head that are on these screws. Give it just a little bit more wiggle room. But I think that's pretty good. I wanna move on. So this was the spacing I was using. And uh, yep, that was my orientation. Do this again. Looks like I might have the holes lining up differently on this power supply. I'm holding it right. Mm -hmm. I must have been looking at things funny. Um, and 
I guess short, long story short, I recently uh, got hit in the eyeball with a piece of gravel while I was out using the riding lawn mower clear in the field. So my eye is a, one of my eyes is a, kind of messed up. It's been a week. Um, it's been a hell of a week. But I can see it's not very well. All right, two down, one to go. Just gonna these things, you can tighten them up and get a bigger divot. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. tight. We're all mounted. Nice and flush on the back. Good gapping. A little wiggle room, but and then not quite as much here. If I loosen the screws up, I could probably get them a little bit better straightened up, but really that's, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, this, this isn't the uh, spline cutting going on. We can be off by a little bit. All right, so we've got those mounted. We got room for the motor drivers. Now we got to put the, the breakout board down here. Um, and then that's it for the major hardware that's getting mounted on here. We'll have a couple terminal blocks, but that's uh, that's a bridge I'll cross when I get there, depending on how many wires are actually running in and out of this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these done and mount the control board. Just gonna, get, gonna use the same method here, but essentially mount these motor drivers back on just so I know everything's enough out of the way. I gotta move you for a second. Right, so the majority of the wires that we're gonna be using, terminals, are just gonna be coming off of this side. Uh, it's gonna be difficult to feed them back through there, but I need the USB and the, the VGA plugs be able to be accessible here. So I could go further down this way. With it. I want to leave as much access as possible, but I don't want to bury it up against the fan here. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna put it there. That's close enough. The screws I'm gonna be using are pretty tight. All right. So let's go ahead and pull this back out. So back to another drill tap. I'm using a 632 this time. Oh, you really wanted a close view, didn't you? That didn't screw up my hole.
All right. Well, that is the majority of the hardware. So these are 48 volt power supplies. Uh, they put out 9.4 amps each. And uh, these are 7.2 amp motor drivers, uh, 7.2 peak, six running. Um, the motors I got were six amp. Now those are NEMA 34, six amp dual shaft, stepper motors. Um, these are from Stepper Online, still on Amazon. I got every, everything here is from Amazon. Um, Sane Smart 5 axis CNC with a handheld pendant that uses the VGA plug here. Um, and then this box, the control box here, that thing was on Amazon. Um, I think it's like a, a 14 by. 20 or 14 by 18 by six or something like that. So those are the parts I've been using so far. Um, I've got some other stuff coming, like some pass-through connectors. Uh, shipping has been so slow, it's obscene. But yeah, I've got more pass-through connectors to get the USB and the VGA plug out of the box and to the control pinnet, and this is gonna go to the laptop. Then we'll also have three axis connectors so um, I'll be using bayonet connectors to pass through the box there then we'll also need input um, I'm gonna probably set these up for 220 volt that way I can bring in the, um, the spindle power or the mills power into this have it go into a terminal block here and get the power out for everything so that you don't have to go find a place to plug the mill in separately from this so um, right now, uh, I think that's about it for mounting the hard, the, the bulk of the hardware at least into the control box here. Um, wiring it and getting all the pass-throughs and then putting up my terminal connectors is going to be in the next video. And uh, I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. It'll be coming hopefully sooner than this last one. It's been about a week since my eye injury. I'm finally just starting to be able to see things again. Um, but I have to put this ointment on my eye and you know, I'll bet her off for a couple hours at that point. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Give me the thumbs up if you did and have a great rest of your day.